Welcome back to our series on Applied Regression Analysis. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is Lecture Video 11. We're reviewing basic statistics, and this is Part 7. We are going to review uh, the hypothesis test for the mean, and we're going to do an example. <clears throat> so, when we... Uh, so, first thing is um, the null hypothesis is the um, baseline or reference case. And we use that uh, null hypothesis as uh, the case under which we calculate probabilities. So what we do is we say, assume that the null hypothesis is true unless we can prove otherwise. Now, we don't really believe that it's actually true because the probability that, um, <clears throat> let's say, x bar is equal to mu is, is uh, true, that's zero. And we talked about that last time. So the probability that x bar equals mu is equal to zero. So when we say h naught mu is equal to mu naught, we really don't believe that. That really has pr zero probability of occurring. Okay, And so, um, because it's an equal sign. So this is our null hypothesis, and the equal sign is always over here. Okay. versus the alternative hypothesis. And this is what we want to know is true or not. Let's say greater than mu naught. And we've got three choices, of course. We've got not equal to, we've got greater than, and we have less than, some value mu naught. Let me zoom in on this so we can see it better. Okay. So, um, this is also, H1 is our alternative hypotheses. So the first step is to write a hypothesis statement such as this. So that's step one. Step two is to calculate a test statistic. So this is step one. This is step two. And I will tell you that I'm very particular about these steps being followed exactly. So throughout this whole course, you're going to be doing hypothesis tests, and I expect you to follow this format exactly, um, and you will get high marks. If you don't, you will not get high marks, okay? Um, this keeps you, by doing it this way, it keeps you from making mistakes, all right? And it's easy to make mistakes, and if you make a mistake in hypothesis testing, you've made a big mistake. So there's nuances here in, in statistics, and um, that's the reason that I'm teaching it this way, is to give you a structure so that it's not so much um, a feeling that it's an art. It is not an art. It is a science. So we need to treat it like it's a science. Okay, so the test statistic. There's two cases. If we know statistic, uh, sigma or if we do not know sigma. If we know sigma, then we're not estimating it, and so the only thing that we're estimating is x bar, and this is our test statistic. And we saw that in the last video. And if we are estimating sigma, if we, which is the, this is the, the normal case that we don't, the, the usual case, not normal case, the usual case where we don't know sigma, then our test statistic is T observed. And it has S in the test statistic. Okay. So you should definitely have those written down. And then we have our rejection region. And I've given you this real nice table here so that um, you can refer to it. So I hope you'll write that down in your notes. So there's two ways to do this. There's the p-value method. And with the p-value, we calculate the probability of our test statistic occurring under the null hypothesis. So one way that we write this is the probability. And we'll put h naught down here to say that it's under h naught. That, um, uh, that, let's say, z is equal to z observed. And let's say not, say, um, uh, I'm sorry, not equal to. So if we have, um, we'll say that this is the probability that z is greater than z naught if under, under h1, H1 determines the sign of this. If we have mu greater than mu naught, then we'll use a greater than here. If we have oops, 
mu less than mu naught, then we'd have the probability under H naught that Z is less than negative, uh, is, is less than Z naught, sorry, not less than. And if we have not equal to, then we have the probability under H naught that the absolute, uh, that, the, that Z is greater than the absolute value of Z naught, which is equal to the probability that Z is less than negative Z naught plus the probability that Z is greater than Z naught, okay? Assuming Z naught's positive here. All right, so this is how we calculate the p-value. So you should, if you don't remember that, please go look up a, a video and review that and make sure that you're comfortable with the p-value method. All right, so the critical value method is where we calculate the test statistic, um, and then we use a critical value, which is right here, whoops, or here, um, or here and here. So those are, and of course, I'm using Z, but T, it goes for T as well. This is where we know sigma, and so we use a Z, then use this column. If we don't know sigma, we use S, so then we use um, this column. All right, and notice how H1 controls which row you use. Okay, so, and if this statement, this is the, the rejection region, let me clean this up so I can say this is the rejection region. It's also called the critical region. Don't know which one our book uses, but they're both just fine. So you may want to write down both, but this is the rejection region. So if these statements are true, then we reject H naught in favor of H1, otherwise we don't, we fail to reject. So we can have, again, if the rejection criteria is true, reject H0, otherwise we fail to reject H0. And then when we're done, we need to put this in terms that laymen or uh, non-technical people can understand. And so here is the uh, way of saying that so that you're always correct. There, it, does or does not exist sufficient evidence to support the claim, we write, the, so if we reject, so does is reject H naught, does not is fail to reject. And then we have to say, so there, there does or does not exist sufficient evidence to support the claim. The claim is the alternative hypothesis. This is H1 written in words. That's the hardest part of the whole thing, is to write this specifically enough so that everybody knows what you're talking about. And then add a blank, our confidence level. So we may be given alpha or we may be given a confidence level. In any case, put the confidence level here. Even though people don't technically know what a confidence level is, they think they do. They understand that there's a level of confidence and that you're 95% confident that this is true if it's a 95% confidence interval or level. And then for, for this study, a sample size of whatever n was used, because that tells um, people a lot. If you only have 10 as your sample size, your results aren't very uh, uh, stable. But if you have uh, hundreds or thousands, then your sample, your results are very stable. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, please don't forget to uh, scan your lecture notes by midnight on the date listed in the course calendar. And please make sure that these lecture notes are neat so that you can review them, of course. Update your formula sheet with these uh, formulas that you've seen today. As always, if you have questions, come by virtual office hours or email me if that doesn't work for you, and we will see you next time.